Welcome to another episode of the Office Altering, Hiring, and Empowering Solutions podcast. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. And if you're a first-time listener, hopefully you will become a long-time listener. As always, I'm your show host, Molly McGrath, founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions and creator of this revolutionary podcast. You can check us out at hiringandempowering.com. So today's guest is Troy Horn of New Economy Kids. And the topic that we're going to be speaking about today is creating an online program that generates reoccurring monthly revenue. If his kids can do it, so can you. So Troy is a father, musician, and entrepreneur. I met Troy oh, about a year ago or so in a mastermind group that we uh started and we meet every Thursday and it's really just grown. We I think we started out meeting an hour, then it moved into an hour and a half. Now we're meeting two hours and we're just talking about all things in regards to creating reoccurring revenue through an online business, through um, funnels. And we'll talk more about what that means today. But Troy has such an amazing background and I'm, I feel really honored to have him here today. He's been fortunate enough throughout his life and career to star in the Broadway show Rent. He's been featured on NBC's The Sing-Off. He's also been um, on multiple different networks and TV arenas. He's also toured the world with the former band The House Jack, singing for audience in U.S., Germany, Japan, France, Italy, Netherlands. And early in his career, he is fortunate enough to record and perform alongside the likes of Ivan Neville and Steve Miller with his then rock band uh, Moses, which ironically is his son, one of his <laughs> children's name as well. <laughs> and I love, Troy, that you've also written music for uh, various films and documentaries. You've appeared on Star Search. You've written music for former NFL champion in Indianapolis Colts coach uh, Tony Dungy's book, Uncommon. So, Welcome. I feel so honored to have you here today. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. It's like, it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, as you get older, you're like, you know, we're always chasing. I think as entrepreneurs, as, you know, just people who have their own business or starting their own business or in their own business or as Americans, I guess we're always, you know, chasing the next thing, trying to make sure we reach the next level. And, and, um, you know, it's, we kind of forget, Hey, you know, we've, been able to, you know, been blessed to do some things. And so that's kind of cool. I hope everyone gets that, you know, that part is like, you know, look at your life and you've probably done some amazing things that are already, you know, blessings to people and can be recurring revenue and can be things that turned into licensed products that help someone who, you know, needs your advice or your, your, um, your expertise. So, mm. yeah. And I've I've shared this with you so often through our mastermind groups, and then earlier today, prior to us starting to record, um, you know, uh, attorneys. That's mm-hmm. my ideal client that yeah. I've worked with for twenty plus years now. So often when I'm on the phone with them, they talk about a marketing idea that they have, and yeah. they would love to be able to package it and share it with the world, their nice. colleagues and other people, and they get stuck in this. Um, how to. And I want us to talk a little bit after we hear your backstory, because you can resonate with so many of our attorneys that are just constantly fighting for time. They're yeah. exchanging time for money. Yeah. They're, they may be road warriors where yeah. they're going to conferences or speaking in their marketplace up and down you know, their highways and have multiple satellite locations. They're constantly mm-hmm. just clamoring for uh, some time. They're missing a lot with their family, um, mm. maybe hitting their goals revenue wise, maybe not. And and sometimes so often I hear they're on the brink of a burnout and feeling mm. like they own a job and they're has to, that's not what they signed up for. <laughs> entrepreneur. Yeah. And I I know you can resonate with this. So tell us a little bit about your backstory. I made that amazing introduction. That was pretty awesome. (laughs) You know, obviously you you're road you were a road warrior. Yes. 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 And you know it's funny because um, there are a few things that I had to um, just come to terms with as I exited the road warrior thing. And you know, I was talking about before. It was like I was you know doing what I do as a musician. I was you know successful at doing what I did and I loved it. And, but there comes a time when you're like, 
I kind of want to see my family. I don't want to, you know, come back home and one day my kid's going off to college and I talked to him for like 10 minutes during that whole stretch. So um, for me, it was like, um, you know, I was gone for nine months one year and uh, it was like, okay, so I can do one or two things. I can continue doing this and maybe see my kids, you know, two to three months out of the year, or I can, you know, readjust and, 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 and shift. And um, for me, it was, you know, just figuring out, okay, what do I want to do, you know, with this expertise that I have as far as, you know, entertaining and marketing. And the beautiful thing right now, Molly, is that um, the internet is so amazing. And I know people get like overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, I got to create a course. I got to put it in a funnel. I got to, you know, write all this copy. But um, I just want to say, you know, like we were talking about before, if if a musician can set it up with his, you know, then 13, now 14 year old kid, you know, to start generating recurring revenue, um, then you totally can. And I think the big part is the mental block that, you know, we have that one, maybe we're leaving something that we know that's comfortable, stepping into something that's uncomfortable. And then also allowing for the time that it's going to take, you know, like saying, yeah, I would love to leave right now, but I need to set up systems and replace this and I can do it. I just have to understand that it's going to be, you know, it's going to take a little time, you know, to make that happen. If that is helpful at all. Yeah, it is. And and what blew me away is exactly what you said when you got to that place of burnout, not seeing your kids. And yeah, of course, you were living your passion in the entertainment right. industry, which I love that you even said it, entertainment and marketing, because no matter what you do, even if you're on Broadway or you're right. writing music or you're touring as a musician, everything that you do to get yeah. on that stage is marketing, right? Of course. Yes, of course. Yes. No, definitely. Marketing is, a, is so powerful. And I think the thing that people don't understand is that you're already doing it. If you're on social media, you're already marketing yourself. You already have a brand. Now it's just about really kind of magnifying it or, you know, stepping out of the, the people that you know and, and uh, marketing your brand to new people. But you already have a brand. You know, and you were able to do that. So you were, you didn't have a marketing degree. You weren't some kind of marketing expert, so to speak, but you were able to, to take your burnout, exhaustion, what have you, mm-hmm. and, and be able to take that passion that you had for the art industry and what you did, I would mm-hmm. say sort of by accident without a tremendous amount of intentionality right. and be able to hone that and build that into a business. So can you talk to us a little bit about, and I'm, and I, I want to say this, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty too much of, right, right. of convincing people right. what's going on right now online and then where the future is going. I'm going to highly recommend that you attend Troy's web class and there'll be a link in the show notes because when I sat through it for the first time with my 17 year old son, who's actually So excited to start building his own online business because you did that with your 7, 10, and (laughs) 14-year-old. I I really want you all, if nothing else, to just hear the staggering data and statistics that Troy presents in his web class in regards to what is going on right now. I know you've spent countless hours in doing a tremendous amount of research yeah. and um, data development in regards to getting all that together. It's staggering. It is mind blowing what is yeah. occurring. And so talking about this new economy and you as the new economy dad, and then creating the new economy kids, which uh, to your point, your teacher was what a 13 year old. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, it was like, you know, how do it was really, you know, just kind of looking back at my own life also and and kind of going through a journey of where, you know, people told me that I couldn't do it and that, you know, you're crazy and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm kind of a, a defiant, you know, as, as many of us entrepreneurs probably are, um, a defiant, a defiant spirit. And so I was like, you said I can't do it. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And so, you know, so I have to make that happen. And I have a 13 year old, um, a 10 year old and uh, a seven year old and my 13 year old um, now 14 um, wanted to play, wants to play in, you know, professional basketball in the NBA. And so I was like, 
you know, we ran upon the same things. People were like, oh, do you know the odds of that? You know, the difficulty. And, and I started seeing, Molly, I started seeing people um, creating success in specifically the sports industry by having, you know, a large either social media following or, you know, a podcast or an information product or, or something that separated them. And I thought, let's do the same thing. And that journey took us into, you know, creating, you know, merchandise, you know, that's related to the podcast and then creating, um, you know, information products. And, and it's, it's been really cool to see, you know, this kid is like, you know, we're starting to, starting to generate revenue from his passion. It's something I can hand to him, something we created together because it's his passion, but something that now he can take, you know, when he graduates, whatever, and say, this is my business and, you know, build something that's recurring, that's passive, that, you know, will allow him to sustain his life um, Mm -hmm. outside of whatever else he does, which is kind of cool. And and for our attorney listeners and or team members or associates, whoever's Mm -hmm. listening today, you know, one thing I want to say, you've grown your business to generating $300,000 a year for you. And you've also helped your kids make over $20,000 this year by following, by finding first, not by finding a niche that right. is attached to a passion. Right. So for example, for your son with basketball, and I know he's interviewed Kobe Bryant on his podcast. And, yeah. <laughs> but what I love about it is he found his passion and then he also started digging in and seeing where there was a missing link. So basketball, and for example, and I, I'm saying, I'm going to unpack this story for the attorneys. I know mm-hmm. a lot of our attorneys that listen, they built their brick and mortar building yeah, yeah. business. And they've hired a few associates to free them up so they can start focusing on some fun projects, some Mm -hmm. creative projects, some online projects that can be their retirement that will create reoccurring revenue. I hear this term probably no less than 120 times. (laughs) Nice. Reoccurring revenue. And they do have ideas. Like I was sharing with you earlier today that whether they're creating a program for, uh, I have one phenomenal attorney in Pennsylvania. He's created an extraordinary program called a social worker boot camp, where he's packaged this entire event. He's been delivering it for years and years and years to sold out rooms. It's creating so much wonderful uh, reoccurring revenue for him. I think he offers it two, four times a year. And he has attorneys across the world just clamoring to get access to the entire package from the PowerPoint to the speaker, to the marketing pieces, to everything. And I even sent him an email earlier this week. I'm like, I have like five other law firms that want this. It just came up in conversation. Like, can you please package it? (laughs) The funnel. And he's like, yeah, I've been thinking about it. And yeah, let me get back to you. And there's so many attorneys that are looking for, I, I don't, I know many of my listeners that heck, if they could generate Thirty thousand or three hundred thousand dollars a year in reoccurring revenue on an online business. That is like that. That's delightful. That's wonderful for them to be able to do. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Now, one thing I just want to highlight real quick that you can speak into us if you can, because I think everyone's like, oh, this is all great, Molly and Troy. I get it, but how do we do it? And and. I know that when you shared with me that everything you found on the internet, let's just even use a case study of your son with the basketball. Everything you found on the internet was about technique. It was all about, you know, different uh, techniques around how to be the best person on your team, et cetera. And you all found an area that was a missing, enormous missing link, which is a mindset piece, right? Right, right, right. You know, no one talks about how to, you know, think the game or, or just become more uh, mentally, I guess, self-confident, you know, if nothing else. And that's just, so we speak into how, help, how we help kids become more confident, you know, just playing the game, which I think translates into life and, and um, you know, just being secure in who they are, which is also a part of the piece that we, we also cover the technique stuff, but our niche, like you said, is um, on-court confidence. Mm-hmm. Really cool. So the the process, if you will, of really, and I know you go into this extensively in your webinar uh, mm-hmm. in regards to the statistics of in, enrolling people into why 
they need to hop on this train, number one. But number mm-hmm. two, how to how to how to combine your passion with a yeah. niche and you so you do that and and then what? How do you start building this this you know, get this funnel going, if you will, for a lack of better term, or get this this online business going? Well, you know, I think the thing is understanding your niche, one, and then two, um, really taking the time to learn, you know, the process, creating a course, creating funnels, learning copy. I know it sounds like a lot, you know, in the beginning, and people are going, oh, oh my gosh, you know, overwhelmed. But it's, but, you know, what's the saying? Inch by inch, everything is a cinch. So it's like you just try to, um, you know, we guide people through it, you know, in the course, obviously. And we, you know, it says new economy kids, but sometimes parents are also, you know, talking about, hey, I want to use this for my business. But the point is, is that it's not as hard as you perceive it to be in your mind. And from someone who's doing it and who has done it with their youngsters, it's like, trust me, if you, you just just think about it as doing one step at a time, as opposed to the whole, you know, the pie. It's like, what do I need to learn today, this month, this week? I'm going to learn that, you know, this month, this week, whatever. And then I'm going to move to the next step. And, you know, within a year or so, you'll be surprised at, you know, where you are as far as creating your own passive income, your own passive revenue, um, your own fun online business, you know, um, based on what you love to do or based on what they love to do. So did I answer your question? That did, did I It did. You know, I, I'm I'm I know my attorneys are so literal and they like to see workflows or plans. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I, I'm I'm even drawing a little flow chart here on my scratch pad of nice. find your passion. You know, yes. I hear this from attorneys all the time as they are ready to build this reoccurring revenue. They mm-hmm. say all right, I'm ready for the fun now. I'm ready. Give me something fun to work with or mm-hmm. the things that they said, if only I had the blank. Usually it's time or they believe it's money, but it's usually time and right. some, some uh, uh, discipline. And just like you said, just one small step at a time, just carving out. I know when you and I spoke, if if I have an idea or I, I, I think I have, I'm pretty close to an idea. The thing that I dream about or that I touch in my practice or my business often, I'm like, oh my God, if I could just capture this and package it or what have you, how much mm-hmm. time would you say just to start off with, if you could give yourself each week X, would you think would be a good first level, one small step at a time? Okay. So I would say, you know, if you're like going back to when I was on the road and touring and away or whatever. So here's the thing that kind of helped me kind of make that move, you know, even when I was there. And that is if you're traveling or if you're working a lot, there's always, you know, an hour or maybe even two during the day, no matter how much, how busy we say we are, there's always an hour or two somewhere where we're saying, hey, I'm going to spend this time to um, detox. I'm going to spend this time to just, you know, sit and um, watch my favorite show on Netflix, or I'm going to go for a run, I'm going to go for a walk or whatever else. So what I'd say is if you can give yourself maybe an hour a day, just focusing on that one thing. Now, here's a here's a great way to do it. A podcast, which you're already listening to right now, just listening to the podcast about your topic, um, listening to audiobooks about your topic. I can't tell you how huge that is. Um, buying a program and listening and letting it play on your cell phone or your mobile phone while you're doing the run or while you're, you know, cooking dinner or breakfast or having a glass of wine, or whatever. An hour a day. And within six months, you know, you should be at a, at a point where I would say you're at a high understanding and actually even able to look at launching a product. Mm. It's, it's so true. As you were saying that I am even thinking when we launched, launched our team empowerment program and I didn't realize there was really a methodology or a science to it, but that's exactly what we did is we just started listening to podcasts, mm-hmm. audiobooks. I even bought some programs for people that weren't even in my industry, but nice. that had online programs that yeah. to some regard, 
modeled what I wanted, you know, eight modules, eight, 12 modules or what have you that has a weekly lesson also has a group coaching program component to it. And that's it. Like just those two pieces. I'm like, all right, it's worth it for me to throw 497 or 297, right. whatever it was 10 years ago or eight years ago when I did that. And then I just started looking at it. I'm like, okay, I can do this. I didn't have the exact naming of my program. I didn't have all the features, all the benefits, everything right. that was included in the quote unquote box. Right. But like you said, that's exactly what I did as I was cooking every morning that I was up and I was doing my power hour walking. Yeah. I was listening to it and not from a place that I needed to be an expert in the no. industry, <laughs> but how can I model this? Right. It, that's what everyone does. It's easier to edit than create, right? Right, 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 right. And when you're listening to it, it's like you said, it's like just on a, in a casual way. It's like your subconscious. And that's, that's the thing I love about mindset work is your, your subconscious is always listening. And you'd be surprised how much you retain when you just let it play, you know, while you're doing other stuff. It's, it's amazing. Like you said, it's, it's really great. It's a really great way to do it. And if you're doing it while you're walking, I mean, there's a, a two for one, if you will, you get your yeah. exercise and your health builder in. And there's so much science about listening to mindset work, podcasts, educational, while you're moving your body and you're yeah. viscerally just getting it into your fabric and your bones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great stuff. And it's really rewarding once you get on the other side. I mean, for me with this work, it's like I get to spend every day working on, you know, actually when we get done here, I'm going to shoot a video with my son. Um, my other son, we're, we're creating a YouTube commercial for his um, YouTube channel. Um, and I get to create, you know, businesses that will, like we said, you know, will have recurring revenue so that when they go to sleep, they're going to wake up with more income. Mm. How great is that? You know? Yeah. I love what what was the number? I think this just a fun little fact to inspire people that your seven year old had made with uh, her business when she launched it. Oh no, my my ten year old when he your did his yeah he did his um we started his like kind of YouTube business and I think on his first launch he made I think it was like twenty five to three thousand dollars something like that something like some somewhere in there like that for his YouTube launch. And I mean, for a 10 year old, that's kind of like sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that's equivalent to 300,000 for an adult. Right, right. Right. And then, you know, we launched a product with, you know, like you said, we launched a product with um, my 12 year old or 14 year old now. And with our first launch with him, you know, he cleared like right around 18 to $20,000 and he's pretty excited about that as well. And so now we're just, you know, um, figuring out how to launch more products and to make them evergreen and, um, you know, uh, create businesses where they can have recurring revenue. That's passive income. Mm -hmm. And for clarification, for our attorneys that are listening, you all have the million dollar idea yeah. sitting in your, your law firm. I'm even thinking of just this, something that will resonate with our listeners. And when you use the term product, you're not shipping anything. You don't have a warehouse. You're not, you don't have a factory where you're constantly shipping stuff, right? You're selling no. services. They're online businesses, correct? Right, right, right. So basically we create a course and we record it. Um, and then um, we're selling a course that we've already created. So the hard work is in the front end, doing the videos and, you know, creating the downloadables, which I'm sure, you know, it's a Word document you send to a, um, a designer on Fiverr or Upwork and, and that's your downloadable. Um, and uh, you're just basically driving traffic to, you know, your um, ideal client to come to your website and consume your product. Mm. <laughs> it really, yeah. honestly, it, it really is that simple. Finding something that you have an idea around is this fun. So I'll use my attorney in Pennsylvania as an example. He went out and started doing speaking engagements to social workers. And then he also just cloned that and did a financial advisor bootcamp because that's his ideal referral source. Nice. So. 
education and yeah. went out and did uh, got it approved for CE, which was a definitely an attractive point for people to get their butts in the room and want to register <laughs> and attend. And then through that, you know, he's just sharing people like, my God, how are you making all this money? How are you getting yeah. all these leads? How are you getting all these ideal clients? You're so happy. You actually are having fun in your practice. And he would share with his friends and colleagues it's, uh, about what he was doing. If he, he was just giving that out to yeah. everyone and anyone because he's just a teddy bear and a sweetheart of a person. Mm -hmm. But then he started packaging it and really putting it into a program. And all of you have that. So you find yeah. your path. Passion, you find your niche and, and where there's a loophole in regard to it. And it, education is an online business. I mean, by and large, that's what you're selling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is funny, is like, if you want it, um, I forget if who it was. It was like either um, one of the guys, what's the guy that has the glasses that has the book called Tribes? I'm, I'm seeing his face. I can't think of his name. But, oh, yes, yes. I can't remember his name. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. Anyways, um, Seth Godin. Oh, yes. Yeah. Go. Oh, yes. Amazing. <laughs> yes. We talked about, you know, if you want something, there are at least, he said, at least a thousand, if not more people who want the exact same thing. And, you know, he talks about the thousand true fans, how, you know, you have a thousand people that are your true fans. Your job is not, is to find, your job is to find those true fans and to serve them. And, you know, he's like, what, with a thousand people, um, giving you $10 a month for, you know, you to serve them and you're now at $10,000 a month doing what you love with just a thousand true fans. So, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's a pretty amazing world we live in right now. Mm. Really cool. Yeah, I know, I know you go into this extensively on your free webinar um, in regards to just how massive this world is. Mm -hmm. But most people die on what I call logo hill, so to speak. They're worried, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. They're worried about the marketing. They're worried about the content, the copy, the mm -hmm. all that versus just speaking into to your point, you find your tribe. If you want it, if you there's something that you're hungry for, something that clicks and catches your attention, which for our listeners, typically education and or some kind of of service in a box, if you will, right. that's a value creator for their clients and for their community, their marketplace, their referral sources, their power partners, etc. So I love how simply you, you you said this, and again, I'm I just have to keep anchoring to systems because uh, process and yeah. systems junkie. Until unless you know our listeners today, unless they can see the plan, the path, and plan, mm -hmm. then it's difficult for them to get buy in, and that's why I really want them to hear this and then okay. go to your webinar because the two integrated with the proof of concept and the data is just. Extraordinary, but to your point, is you copy and 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 you you create. Right, right, you're not right. you're not copywriting. You're not stealing anything. But you see a program that resonates with you that it delivers. And I don't care if it's in the health world. So many people will buy programs that you know uh, 12, 12 weeks to six pack abs or whatever, and you right. throw two ninety seven at it. Let's just say. Right. I mean, I probably have a hundred of these programs. Right. The delivery and the way they give you the content, nine out of 10 times, you're like, holy crap, there's so much information here. There's so much value. Mm -hmm. Even if I can't digest all this in, or even if I implement 10% of it, I'm going to like 10x my return on investment of this. Right. Thing. It's just so fantastic. So find something that you've bought in the past that the delivery method resonated with you and, or you really felt like you got value if not oh, oh, like or something that you're saying geez they should charge more for this thing mm -hmm. like, it was really great and model it yeah. and then be able to get your idea and then looking at the packaging of it what you want it to look like from pricing and you and i have had million hours of conversations with our mastermind group about mm -hmm. 
pricing, right? So right, many right. of us have gotten jammed up before launch about pricing. And we, what I love about our mastermind group is we talk each other off lap. We're like, who cares? Just throw it, make it a dollar. It doesn't right. matter. Just launch it. launch it. And if you have a hundred orders, you know, it should be $2 or right. whatever it is. Just throw whatever price on it. And I think so many people get hung up on what the price needs to be for it. And right. it needs to be exact and pristine. And then they won't. <sighs> They, they they don't launch because they're so afraid of what the pricing should be in or the competitor, right? Right, right. Well, here's the thing that I love that I got from, I forget, one of the millions of <laughs> programs I listen to is and it's that you don't have any competitors. And I know that like as, com- as com- competitive people, and I'm one of those people, it's hard to wrap your head around that. But you got to think about it. And I think it's maybe even Tony Robbins that might have said something. He goes, he goes, um, you know, Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, um, Lark Burger, if that's something you do or whatever, they all sell hamburgers. So it's the, what's different is, is the way that they do it. It's still a hamburger at the end of the day. It's still, you know, two pieces of bread on both sides, a beef patty in the middle with lettuce and tomato. But the way they present either their store or their marketing or, you know, whatever extra little things they add to it makes it their own. So they're not worried about, Hey, I just made a hamburger right across the street. McDonald's has one. Are they going to be mad that I copied their hamburger? It's like, no, we're all serving different people. We're all serving different audiences and this product may be similar, but there are people that will not go to the person that you know, you see as your competitor, not because they're not good, just because they resonate with your story. So buy into that idea that, no matter what I do, copy, emulate, you know, kind of make my own, it's still original because I'm telling it and I'm sharing it from my brand, from my point of view. And the people that are coming here resonate with me and I get to serve them because they identify with what I'm saying and how I'm presenting it. Mm. You know? I love that story. I haven't heard that before. I heard, um, you know, confused mind says no. And so often yeah. I think that even with online businesses and it, so often I'll get people's marketing pieces. I'm like, I have absolutely no idea what they do what they're selling <laughs> right. because to your point, they are selling hot dogs and hamburgers and marketing uh, hot dogs and hamburgers in the same message. And I, right. I heard this once on a podcast, I think it was, where someone said, when do you ever walk into McDonald's and order a ham dog? <laughs> <laughs> I love right, that. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so I think so often we're trying to distinguish ourselves in the marketplace and or um, communicate that we're better than the the burger stand down the street and we confuse it and clutter right. it by throwing all these bonuses and values and extras where the person's right. scratching their head and saying, I don't know if I want a hot dog or a hamburger, so I'm not going to eat anything. Eat anything. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. So I love that. So don't just stay in your own lane is what I always yeah. tell my clients and my kids, like stay in your own lane. Don't worry about the hamburger, even right. with my clients so often when they're hanging their own shingle and, or even if they've been in business for 20 years and they're looking at increasing their fees, they're like, well, the guy down the street or the gal up the hill and like, right. don't even Doesn't pay matter. attention to them. Yeah. It's right. just clouding and right. it's, it's killing your confidence and it's talking you out of your future. Just yeah. stay in your own lane, pay attention to what you're doing and communicate your why, who you are and what distinguishes you from the seat you sit in, not, not to, you know, an either or conversation or a better than. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because in doing this mindset work with um, my son, we were listening to Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan says, everyone gets, you know, how, how I was so competitive and how, you know, I beat all these teams. He said, the secret to being successful is it was never about me versus anybody else. It was always me versus me. So if I had 20 points last time against this team, then I needed to beat my own record. It had nothing to do with the team. It had nothing to do with, you know, the guys across from me. It was like, I knew what I did last time. So I was in a competition against myself to do better this time. And that, uh, that removes all the other, you know, what is this guy doing or that guy doing or this woman doing or that lady doing or whatever. It's like, what did I do last time? How do I do better against myself? And as you were saying that, Troy, what came to me was um, 
Wow. If you just took that mindset and you took that piece of it, it eliminates all your reasons and excuses of why you can't do it because yeah. you you spend that. As, so if you only have an hour a day to listen to something that's going to help feed your brain of what you're going to be building, listening to someone else's podcast program, what have you. So often people will be like, well, I need, I need to go research the competitor. I need to pay attention to what other people in my space are doing. And it kills your confidence. And then it gives you 10,000 reasons and excuses to prolong and talk yourself out of your future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you start and you made like $5 the first time, like, great. So now I'm going to make 10. How do I make 10 here. I'm not worrying about whoever made, you know, 10,000 or a million or whatever. I made $5. Great. I made something. So now how do I turn this into 10? And then how do I turn this into 15? You know what I mean? Which is a really, I guess, stress, uh, less stressful way to kind of approach the whole thing. And I think more effective as well. And, 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 and to your point, what you've created with new economy kids based on your own experience, you were out there as a musician, as a entertainer, mm-hmm. and you, you all of your um, assets, if you will, mm-hmm. were in your physical presence, right? And mm-hmm. presented on stage with your voice or your acting or what have you. That's where all your assets are. So if you can take that and translate that into building an online business and becoming the the coach, if you will, for new economy kids. I know you you've been coined as the dad coach as well. Mm-hmm. And and build a three hundred thousand dollar a year business for you on doing that and working, you know, owning your life, be, having a work life balance, and then for your kids. So to your point, when you have your seven, ten, and fourteen year old, I, when they get proof of concept and they make their first five bucks, how much gas did they have in their tank to keep going and double and triple and quadruple that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. They, I mean, I, I can't think of one time that one day that they don't bring it up. It's like, you know, I have, you know, this, <laughs> this amount of money or, you know, I want to get this, you know, I have this in my bank account. And I'm like, well, yes, but now we're also going to learn that we don't spend everything and how to, you know, how to uh, uh, manage our finances. But, but yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, kids, good grief. They're making $10. It's like, oh my gosh, this is great. I'm making money doing what I love. So yeah, the gas tank is always filled from from that stuff. And how long is your program from taking people from a place of passion to concept to niche to launch? Great. So basically what we do is it's basically a year program. And then after the year, um, you know, it's kind of like a month to month type of online program. you know, kind of mentoring, coaching type of a deal. But the first thing is a full year. And the reason why is because, you know, we don't move into here's, I mean, I was just actually in this great program. First, let me say ClickFunnels, awesome. This uh, 30 day challenge, right? Which is meant to be like a brain dump type of a deal. And um, that was a lot, but, and I, and I, I don't know how, you can really navigate with with a whole bunch of information being thrown at you. So we make it kind of really easy, really digestible, really small steps so that our, you know, families don't get overwhelmed with, you know, I wasn't able to compete this goal this week or, you know, this month and now I'm behind. So I just don't want to do it at all. And, you know, we just missed opportunity. So short answer is, you know, it's a year in and then after the year, you know, it's, it's, both mostly mentoring and coaching and kind of making sure you're staying on track. Mm. And what I, I really, what attracts me most to the program, because my 17 year old is about to go through Troy's program as well, is that the parent goes through it with the, with the child as yeah. well, ideally. Yeah. yeah. And to your point, you and I both, so Troy and I both, um, for our online businesses, we use a platform called ClickFunnels, which brought us together and how we met through our mastermind. We both are fortunate enough to live in the Denver metro area and be able to meet every week with a bunch of other what they call funnel hackers. Uh And you and I both did the 30-day challenge and... 
to your point, it was, I mean, the value. Oh my goodness. Yeah. How much was that program? A hundred bucks? hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. That was great. That was a really great hundred bucks, but yeah. yeah. But it was like drinking from a fire. <laughs> right. It was like, holy cow. And the whole concept was about taking from from concept to launch in 30 days, guys. So, it I mean, it, you you can do it. There are many, many people that did it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I petered out, I think, after day seven. I just, my, mm-hmm. I, my head just exploded. <laughs> it's a lot. It's yeah, a lot. It's a lot. So, one year of uh, being able to take it from concept to um, launch is extraordinary because it gives you that time to, um, I can tell you, I would not recommend 30 day and like <laughs> absolutely homeless. And, right, right. and there were some people in there. They're like, yeah. I got $2 in my bank account, which is a great place to, there's a lot of mindset coaches that talk about that, mm-hmm. that sometimes that, that, that starvation is the greatest motivation. Right. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. We'll get you going that way. Definitely. Well, I hope our listeners today are inspired and I'm so grateful to first and foremost to have met you. I feel completely honored to be in a mastermind with you. I've learned so much. I'm excited for my son to go through this program. I'm going to go through it side by side and take one of my online programs and actually put it through your entire your long program. Oh, fun. Yay. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm excited about it because when I launched it, I, I really, truly, there was no script. There was no blueprint. There wasn't a platform. Um, I'm just pretty much just throwing everything against the wall and seeing what's stuck and driving myself absolutely insane. <laughs> so well, great. I'm excited. That'll be fun. That'll be very cool. That'll be very cool. So as a gift today, um, Troy is going to, um, the notes again, will or the link will be in the bottom of the show notes, but neweconomykids.com. And you can go there and register for his next webinar that he will be hosting in regards to showing you exactly how to, you know, be able to create this online business in this new economy way for, and I know many, many of our listeners today, they have that million dollar idea or that $300,000 idea, or heck, if it's even a $20,000 idea, it's, it's, I cannot say enough for you to attend this event. It's extraordinary to hear the statistics of the state of the union on where online is today. And we think that we've hit the tipping point. We haven't even scratched. Yeah. 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 Automation is, is crazy. I mean, just, you know, listening to Mark Cuban and some of these other entrepreneurs and Elon Musk and all these guys talk about the automation that's here, that's slowly being introduced is mind blowing. <laughs> it, <laughs> it really, really is. is. And, and what I love about it is you can, it's mind blowing. Yes. But how they've, they've said, they've given us a blueprint. Yeah. Just follow it. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. So I'm excited. It'll be fun. Yes. Well, thank you for being our guest today, Troy. I um, I'm I'm so excited for our listeners to hear your um, your web webinar and to see the staggering statistics. Number one, but number two, to see how they truly one year how easy. And I like that it's one year; it's not thirty days because. Right. They have full-time careers. They have businesses. And to your point, the investment of one hour, even in six months, you're already going to be at a place to launch. Right, right. And you'll have all your stuff in, in, in place and you'll understand it. And, you know, you'll be ready to start taking the baby steps out into the world. Indeed. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Troy, for being a guest today and making an appearance and sharing your your journey as well as your unbelievable, invaluable wisdom and knowledge with us. Well, thank you for having me. This has been awesome. This yes, been cool. <laughs> great. All right. Okay, listeners, this is a great stopping point. This has been another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions podcast, where legal dream teams of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs world really do come true. Until next time.